After COVID-19 pandemic, Vietnam consumer market has undergone significant growth and transformations in recent years, driven by a rapidly expanding population growth, rising technological advancement, and increasing urbanization. The country economic growth has also contributed to the development of a more certificate consumer landscape, with consumers seeking out higher quality products and services and adopting more modern lifestyles. As a result, international brands are increasingly targeting Vietnam as a key growth market. So, Vietnam retail sectors, particularly that consumer good, is recovering from the effect of COVID-19 pandemic gradually and is predicted to rise quickly. This uh, repower is being forced in large part of, uh, by the current market change. From 2022 to 2027, uh, the Vietnamese retail market is anticipated to expand by 163.5 billion dollars at a compound yearly growth rate of 11.4 percent, according to a report of Technavio. One of the top three privately held businesses in Vietnam is the Masan Group, has expanded its network of Winmart store by experimenting with online food shopping through its website. It is predicted that this action will boost sales for Vietnamese shops. Moreover, the competition in Vietnam retail markets is already intense, and it will only become more so with increased investment from domestic and foreign giants. Retail sales of consumer goods and services reached 519 trillion Vietnam dong in May 2023, up 1.5% from the previous month and 11.5% from the same time the previous year. This expansion was filled by longer vacations. Furthermore, overall retail sales rose to 2.52 quadrillion Vietnam dong from January to May, representing a 12.6% year-on-year rise, the biggest since 2015 and a 28.3% increase before the COVID-19 pandemic. Sales of different items increased as well, with food and foodstuff sales growing by 14.6% and garment and textile sales increasing by 11.1%. Besides, home appliances, transportation vehicles, and ed educational and cultural offerings all grew in popularity. The income increased significantly in several regions, including Bắc Ninh, Bình Định, Bình Dương, Thanh Hóa, and Hải Phòng. Regarding lodging and food services, the revenue was 268.3 trillion Vietnam dong in the first five months, rising 22.1% over the previous year. Other services also generated nearly the same, with 253.6 trillion Vietnam dong. So to capitalize um, on the market's latent consumption potential in Vietnam, um, the Ministry of Industry and Trade proposed uh, lowering the value-added tax on some commodities. This policy is intended to enhance consumption, expand output, create jobs, improve state budget, and contribute to social economic growth. She also intended to prioritize domestic trade promotion through digital platforms and e-commerce as well as assist local enterprises uh, in establishing consumed products contributing to total consumer spending are three groups of F&B, healthcare, and clothing and footwear, with F&B dominant at 68%. What forms the trend was the need for improved living standards and also what happened to us during the past years, the pandemic forcing people to give higher concern to this aspect. The shifted preference in lifestyle is linked with the new priority. Notably, the concern for quality outperform others as top attributes considered when purchasing all product sectors, followed by the distinct attributes for each one, such as the safety for transportation. Also, dictated by the hustle of life, people are more demanding convenience, and those who can meet their needs are expected to be automatic and rapid processed. I would say the consumer wants feature is small but mighty. Modern trade channels are hypermarkets, supermarkets, and convenience stores now dominate consumer preference. It is fully anticipated the shift toward those modern trade channels to accelerate going forward. So this observation has driven the increasing expansion of modern retail chain stores. Though not as powerful as modern trade, e-commerce platforms are also growing as the most popular online buying channels. This growth is driven mainly by the significant promotional activities serving for the competitiveness. The promotion channels are like various, which combined both modern and traditional ones. Initiatives have been stuck with not just the sensitivity to locals' behaviors, but also encouragement for novel experiences for the better, such as new payment formats, after sales services are also enhanced by retailers to catch up with the demand for quality. The first kind of factor that affects the retail industry is labor factors. Talking about employment, Vietnamese labor laws govern various aspects of employment, including working hours, minimum wages, employment contract, and employee benefits. 
I am about consumer protection laws. Entering the retail market in Vietnam, investors should be mindful of the laws to protect consumers. It can affect the industry in two forms, product safety and labeling. Product safety standard, labeling requirements, and product liability are some regulations that make to protect consumers. Marketing and advertising regulation. Retailer needs to adhere to advertising and marketing laws, including truth in advertising, fair competition, and regulation regarding promotional activities. Along with several factors such as intellectual property protection, data and privacy protection, and foreign investment law and trading regulation. It's very important for retailers to comply with these regulations to avoid legal issues. The second factor that affect the industry is technological factor. It includes technological advancement in the era of international integration and the fourth industrial revolution. Vietnam is actively promoting technological development to streamline processes and maximize profit in the retail market by investing heavily in science and technology. As a result, factories are actively transitioning toward automation. Large retailers are also accelerating e-commerce due to the rapid growth of internet penetration and smartphone usage. After the pandemic, retail system were heavily affected, but they are preparing for a strong rebound based on omnichannel development, including in-store, e-commerce, and mobile commerce. Since 2021, the trend of buying goods of store has also been growing due to the post-pandemic influence. From the retailer perspective, the shift to omnichannel retail represents a multi-faced strategy by expanding their digital presence. Retailer can not only mitigate revenue losses caused by COVID-19 disruption, but also tap on uh, the new customer basis. Specifically, through online or mobile platform, retailer can now reach consumers located far away from the physical store who previously found it infeasible or impractical. Now, let's talk about the social and demographic factors. The social and demographic factors can have a significant impact on the consumer goods industry of Vietnam. Vietnam has a population of approximately 97 million people with a median age of 32 years old. Some factors that could affect the industry are the population growth. Vietnam's population has steadily increased since 1960 and has shown no signs of slowing down. So as the population grows, the demand for consumer goods increases, creating opportunities for businesses in the consumer goods industry to expand their operations. About economic factors. The economic factors can have a significant impact on the consumer goods industry in Vietnam. Let's talk about GDP. Vietnam has been experiencing a strong GDP growth that have never been able to happen in recent years when it reached 366 billion dollars in 2020 and 2021 when the economy is growing like that people tend to spend more money on goods especially consumer goods so i'm very very appreciate that you spent a little time with me today and see can you explain in consumer goods industry that why people tend to spend more money when the economy is growing instead of trying to keep money. And the growth typically have higher incomes, like from the pay rises, job stability, and investment returns. So with that, people will feel more like financially secure and able to spend on discretionary items. And if the economy is weak or in a recession, people tend to have lower or stagnant incomes and less job security, so they spend less, obviously. It's expected to grow from 246.65 billion USD in the 2023 to 435.59 billion USD by 2028 at a compound annual growth rate of 12.05% during the forecast period 2023 to 2028, expanding up by about 163.49 billion USD. Yeah, some factors driving this growth include the COVID-19, the growth rate on the lower than the previous year, 20.7%, with positive news for the business community given the global retail market decline in revenue during the pandemic. The second one is demand for convenient food. Due to busy lifestyle and increasing consumer demand for convenience, there is a growth preference for ready-to-eat meals, prep racket, snack, and easy food options. Factors include urbanization, changing consumer habits, and desire for time-saving solutions. Urbanization is likely to reach 55% uh, in 2030. The next factor is the expansion of the retail landscape. It includes the country's rapid economic growth and increasing consumer purchasing powers and the investment in infrastructure development. The next factor is the growing popularity of private label brands. It reflects trending consumer preference, increasing affordabilities and the strategic effort of retailers to offer competitive alternatives to national brands. 
Last but not least, rapid growth in consumer spending. Vietnam's disposable income per capita is expected to grow quickly and reach 362 USD in 2023. Well, it is said that consumer goods have strengths and potential for growth, so investors here can reap long-term benefits from the industry.